With that, we have an article about uh, list reveals the best collaborations, biggest viral products, and the hottest brand in 2019. Lists always do this sort of like end of year uh, roundup of some of the best things that happened. Usually, it's a bit hype led. You know, it's the stuff that people are searching, Google Trends sort of stuff, analytics on their website. You know, it's not much. It's not much of a much really in that regard. It probably the brands that list are probably selling the most are usually brands at the upper bracket of terms of the price range. It probably attracts a certain customer. It's not very indicative of the whole consumer base out there, but you know, it at least provides some context, some idea of what's happening out there in the field. So this article from um, Highest to Buy it says the following about it, right? Global fashion search platform list has revealed the 2019 year of fashion report. The streetwear heavy dossier compiles the year's biggest trends and brands, viral products, best collaborations and more. I bet all those fashion types who are annoyed about streetwear being on the runway can't wait until this list is, con you know, is, um, uh, in, what you call it, contains mostly tailored fashion brands, isn't it? Because they all, uh, they all hate streetwear now. It's interesting, isn't it? I mentioned it before and I still think the whole fashion scene, hate getting, um, getting tired of streetwear and hoodies and stuff is a slight dog whistle about the fashion scene not wanting too many brownies and not too, not, not, not too many black and brown people at their um, at their fashion shows, right? Because for the most part, Asian people tend to kind of steer towards a luxury fashion scene that, you know, you except for maybe the South Koreans and the K-pop people, they're, you know, they're quite streetwear or street influenced, but for the most part, they're going to be able to kind of, you know, uh, put gowns on, you know, some of the biggest um, Asian uh, or Far East um, actresses and actors out there. But, you know, everyone else just wants to wear some of the best designer, luxury, streetwear-inspired clothing. It's not going to go anywhere, but the fashion scene is so tired of it. You can tell they hate it. Anyway, it continues. On the brand's front, Off-White um, was the world's most searched over the past year. Interesting. It's the most searched, but you don't really see it worn, in it? Off-White is weird. I'm sure he, he does numbers, but when you do see it worn outside, I only see a particular segment of the population wearing it and where i live in stratford it's only only students who um live in a student accommodation just near where i live that's it i only see people from that university wearing it that's it and if i go to central london it's, it's it, maybe it's a bit of a change there you see some european kids wearing it but it's not something you see everybody wearing like you know in general whereas even in the hood where i live there are people wearing gucci uh wearing um tom brown even I've seen some guys wearing Rick even sometimes in this area, which is really funny. Maybe mostly Congolese dudes, but people still wear Rick and Yoji Yamamoto. So it's a strange thing to, you know, you don't really see people wearing off-white too much. When you see it, obviously you know it because it's got those big garish logos and colors and now it's got a big, you know, full, full of fits and uh, really big shapes and sizes and all that malarkey. That can, you can kind of spot that from a mile away. But interesting to see. It's the most searched, but do people actually buy it or are they just trying to, I don't know, Keep an eye on it. Still, his designs. I don't know. Interesting to see where it goes. Meanwhile, Bottega Veneta Renaissance under the guidance of creative director Daniel Lee was awesome. The guy is probably like my age, I think, as well. Creative director of Bottega Veneta is absolutely smashing it. Those boots that he put out recently were. I think his first collection. I was always a fan of when that dropped. I'm glad to see everyone kind of um, clocking on and and buying those uh, massive uh, Chelsea boots that he has that come out to your fire that look really really nice. Um, Daniel Lee underlines his crowning as a world's breakout brand, leading out competition the likes of. Telfar and Pia Moss. Going into 2020, List predicts a big 12 months for brands including Elix and Marine Serie, or Serre, I don't pronounce that. Returning to work, Virgil Abloh can look back on a stellar 12 months. His IKEA collaboration was named one of the best of the year, taking place alongside Sakai and Nike, Supreme in Stone Island, Rick Owens and Burger Socks, and List states consumers spent an average of 192 on a pair of new sneakers which is 39% year-on-year -year increase, which means we're going to see more sneakers priced at more higher prices. Congratulations for that, you nonsense consumers. Um, average brand on a t-shirt increased from 16% up to $67, which is, you know, what it is. Um, you remember when £50 for a t-shirt was nuts? You remember when Bape, people didn't want to buy Bape t-shirts when they were £50? I think that was the first brand I think I remember clocking when they broke that ceiling. Even maybe Double Taps maybe were probably the first one. Because I used to always buy my Japanese brand secondhand on Yahoo JP. But I remember going to a store and seeing like a Double Taps t-shirt, a Babe t-shirt for like 70 quid. You're like, flipping hell. It didn't make any sense to you. Then you wore it. And you're like, okay, cool. I get it. You know what I mean? Cool, cool materials, cool shape. But do you remember when that was a big deal? And now you're seeing like nonsense brands pricing their t-shirt at 60 $80. Brands that have no no right to put their to put their prices that higher doing it and i get it it's a positioning thing isn't it if you're a brand you want to be positioned alongside the brands that you want 
to be next to as opposed and the only way to do it nowadays especially because most of the buyers and merchandise in the stores don't really know what they're doing or are mostly trying to you know increase the sales uh, per square meter are just grouping all the expensive brands or expensive brands and just that's it there's no real curation of the space you don't find like cool you know underground skateboard brands next to you know a really luxury high-end brand they're gonna put all the high-end stuff that's you know selling for a hundred dollars plus in that section and everything else in that section it's a bit annoying but you know what can you do and i wonder how they chose the best collaborations what's the criteria for best collaboration is it because of resale value is it because of cues virality on social media what is it because if it's that then i don't i don't know how do you there was meant there was loads of really good collaborations the last 12 months is it just slows hanging through that really isn't it but i don't know what do i know um but it befitting the times searches including the sustainability keywords increased 75 percent year on year but no one really cares about sustainability everyone talks a big game but no one really cares let's 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 call a spade a spade that's another that's sustainability is replaced like plus size models and stuff and diversity and it? it's the next kind of social trope um activist kind of uh what you call a flag that these fashion types are going to try and fly and make themselves look as if they care about the world they don't care we, we don't care they want to go to their paris fashion week shows turn up um, have a good time, sit in front row, drink their expensive drinks, go back home, wear nice clothes, and that's it. This idea that they can do more with fashion if they uh, stay towards sustainability is crazy. Like, it just doesn't make sense. The bottom dollar, it's not going to make sense. The big executives make the decisions that aren't going to do it. Just forget about it. Um, if the brands themselves, you know, individually can make a change, you know, Vivian Westwood um, does what she does. Um, uh, who's the other lady that does it as well? Uh, Stella McCartney is big on sustainability. Cool, you can do it yourself, especially if you've got LVMH in backing you. But then again, there's conflicting interest there. But I think overall, to make people give a shit about sustainability when there's other parts of fashion that are just completely broken is insane. But again, what do I know? Um, and then lastly, here, other notable takeaways um, are you see his hottest sneaker, the Alexander McQueen oversized sneaker, and the logo of the year is a Fendi Zuka print, which I kind of don't agree with. I think the hottest sneaker of this year, quite clearly, has to be the Dr. Martin's Jaden. It has to be. That's the biggest shoe of the year. That or one of the feelers. You can't, and another feeler isn't going to get any love from the list people and the fashion types because they're, you know, they're a bit too snobby for that sort of stuff. But the feeler, the Dr. Martin's Jaden boot, um, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with and you know what that is. Let me just quickly get it up on here. Dr. Martin's Jaden. That is a that is a the stellar shoe, and again, it's just a, an amazing thing to see how it's been able to kind of resurge over these years. I've got my um, Jaden boots here, actually. Let me show you. These are these are my Jadens, right? These are probably the these are maybe the third pair I've had of Jaden boots. Maybe the third pair in all the years I've been wearing Dr. Martins. When I used to work at Dr. Martins, I got a couple of pairs free that I wore into the ground. I wore them every single day when I was playing, when I was, you know, going to East London and being the hipster that I was and just completely destroyed them. And of course, because I worked there, I was able to get another pair for free. And I think this might be the same pair that I got back th back then. And I've still, you know, they've still got a lot of life in them. The, the, the back of the heel is a bit messed up and I probably worn them a, a bit too often, but, you know, they've got a lot of life in them. Amazing shoes. So I don't know how long ago that was, if that was like, I don't know what, like four, five, six years ago, I don't know, or maybe more since I've worked at Dr. Martins. But it's just incredible and cool to see somehow the trend has somehow kind of peaked. It kind of came back into vogue again. I don't know how that happened. I don't know who they placed it on. I don't know who done the marketing, but definitely whoever the Dr. Martins who was able to kind of do this is kind of reserves all my kind of claps and adulation because that's 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 what marketing is. That's what activation is. That's what seeding is really about. The ability to take a shoe that's been out for ages and somehow give it a new lease of life and it's completely blown up. When I went to Berlin, um, what, recently, especially recently because it was a bit colder, um, towards the beginning of October, they were everywhere. You couldn't find, like, I think one in five people, or maybe two in five that were queuing at, outside of Bergheim was wearing a pair of Jaden boots. Everyone was wearing, and of course it makes sense, right? It's, it's effectively your, your quintessential 1460 uh, Dr. Martin's boot with a stack sole, right? Um, perfect for the Bergheim dance floor, perfect for just walking around every day, and just a perfect compliment to kind of that kind of, you know, get um, techno, all black look. And just a really versatile shoe. But it was everywhere. This, this, this along with the feeler has to be the one standout. The Alexander McQueen oversized Stan Smith looking trainer is a big shoe. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of it. I love it. But I still think in terms of who you see regularly wearing this kind, these kind of shoes, especially because you can get this, you know, you can get Dr. Martin's uh, shoe fairly cheap compared to maybe the Alexander McQueen. That might be 200 plus. I think the Dr. Martin's boot is probably 100 something, 150 around that kind of mark. 
it's it's, it's the most successful. Uh, it's, it's probably has to be the most um, uh, well worn shoe that has to, I've seen on the streets. Hundred percent. There's no way that that the Alexander McQueen beats this, in my opinion, anyway. But what do I know? What do I know? Um, 